ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ಅಜ್ಞಾನತಿರಾಂಧ್ಯ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನ ಶಲಾಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮೀಲಿ ಯೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಚೈತನ್ಯಮನೋಭೀಷ್ಟ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತ ಯೇನ ಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪ ಕದಾ ಮಹ್ಯಂ ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಪದಾಂತಿಕ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪೃಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನ್ನಿತಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವೇ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶ ತಾರಿಣೆ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ್ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಮೇ ಬೈ ಯೋರ್ ಬ್ಲೆಸಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ದ ರೈಟ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಕಮ್ ಎಟ್ ದ ರೈಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಇನ್ ದ ರೈಟ್ ಮೂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಫಿಕೇಶನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಡಿವೋಷನಲ್ ಔಟ್ ಪೋರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ ಫಿಲ್ಟ್ ಎಫ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ರುಕ್ಮಿಣೀಸ್ ಲವಿಂಗ್ ಲೆಟರ್ ಎಟ್ ದ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಫೀಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ್ವಾರಕಾಧೀಶ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮೇ ಅಪ ಸಿದ್ಧಾಂತ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರಸಾಭಾಸ್ ಸ್ಟೇ ಅಟ್ ಬೇ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಟ್ರೈ ಮೈ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ಟು ಕೀಪ್ ಇಟ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಲಾಯಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಎಥಿಕಲ್ ಆಸ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಇನ್ ಲೈನ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ವರ್ಕ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯಸ್ ವಂಶಾ ಕಲ್ಪತರು I wanted to start with a very beautiful verse that is composed by Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami. So my request to everyone, please kindly repeat. This is a very beautiful verse. Iha Ninisha Mikarena Bhaskaram Murdhna Bhibhitsa ಮಿಸುಮೇರು ಪರ್ವತ ದೋರ್ಭ್ಯಾಮಹಾರ್ಣವ ಗುಣಾನ್ ವಿವಕ್ಷೇ ಅಪತ್ರಪ ಸೊ ಅವರ್ ಬಿಲವಡ್ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಕೃಷ್ಣದಾಸ್ ಕವಿರಾಜ್ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಇಸ್ ರೈಟಿಂಗ್ ihani nishami karena bhaskaram if someone tells me to hold the sun in my palm i can happily do it murdhna <laughs> bibhitsami sumeru parvatam and if someone tells me to crack the sumeru mountain with my forehead i still can do it dorbhyam titirshami maharnavam yato and if someone tells me to cross this material ocean just by swimming on the power of my arms oh i will happily do it however gunan vavakshami hare ra patrap but through my tongue i cannot fully describe the qualities of krishna so this doesn't mean he is literally going to crack the sumeru with his forehead it doesn't mean he is going to hold the sun and the moon in his palms this is poetry where so much is said by the words that are said so it is krishna das kaviraj goswami's affection for krishna oh krishna i know it's impossible for me to hold the sun in my hand but i think that's also a possibility but i cannot completely glorify you my lord with the little tongue that you have given me with a little time in the human form with the little ability and with the little vocabulary of words krishna how can i describe you which aspect of your should i start describing if i describe your lips i feel all my life will go just in describing the redness the softness the the 
glossy feeling of your lips. But if I go on to describe the curl of your eyelash, my Lord, I think I will drown in that nectar pond of the description of your eyelashes. How much time do I have after all? How much ability does the tongue have? It's like a sparrow, my Lord, and your glories are like the vast sky. My tongue is like a fish, and your qualities are like the deep, dark, dense ocean. How can the tongue, which is like a little restless fish, cover the length and breadth of the ocean of your qualities? It is not possible. But still he says, Harehe apatrapa vivakshami. Still, although I know I cannot, but I will still shamelessly and greedily make that attempt. So taking shelter of Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami, we are seeing Rukmini's letter and the qualities of Krishna that Rukmini has extolled in the letter, but through the eyes of the Gauri Vaishnava Acharyas. It's so fascinating. In the first two verses of the seven verses, Rukmini Devi counts so many wonderful qualities of Krishna. She says, Katva Mukunda Mahati Kula Shila Rupa. She says the word rupa. Rupa means form. In Sanskrit poetry, typically a good poet never repeats the same word again. Never. And if they do, it just shows that, well, they have very limited vocabulary and they have to use the same word again and again. But if someone is a very good poet, they will make sure that they say the same thing in different ways, in newer creative ways, with newer uh, synonymous words which mean the same but the grammatical construct would be different right or the expression would be different but in the first verse and the second verse Rukmini Devi uses the word Rupam Rupam Drusham Drushimatam Akhilartha Labham third line of the first verse and the first line of the second verse Katva uh, Mukunda Mahati Kula Shila Rupa there also the word Rupa has come. Certainly Krishna's form is the most powerful weapon that he carries. There's no doubt about it. Krishna's form and Krishna's flute. These are the most powerful weapons he carries. In the previous generations, he carried bow and arrow. And a generation before that, he carried Shanka and Chakra. But in Krishna avatar, Jahana kaam chalta tha tiro aur kamano se vaha vijay hoti thi natwar ke keval murli ke tano se. <laughs> what it means in English, paraphrased, is that Krishna's flute and Krishna's beauty are very strong lethal weapons with which Krishna can attack everyone, including himself. <laughs> Srila Rupa Goswami in Sri Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which is one of the most fascinating, unparalleled, must read books for every Gaudiya Vaishnava, Sri Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Srila Prabhupada found the book to be so important that he did a summary study English translation to it. Rupa Goswami has given everything in Sri Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Ridhi yasya prerna pravartitoham varaka rupopi tasya harehe padakamalam mande chaitanya devasya. Rupa Goswami says in the Mangala Charan to Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu that it may seem that I am getting the credit for writing Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, but for all times to come, all the readers please note Ridhi yasya prerna ya pravartitoham varaka rupopi. I am an insignificant rupa. Rupa Goswami is writing. I find it. Uh, shameful to even say it because Rupa Goswami is so exalted but in his humility he says I am insignificant but how are these works coming out? Ridhi yasya prerna somebody is sitting in my heart and playing the string of the string instrument of my life which means when a musician plays an instrument the instrument is sounding but the credit goes to the musician Rupa Goswami says I am the music instrument 
and the sound is coming through my poetry. But the musician is, Tasya Harehe Padakamalam Vande Chaitanya Devasya. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is sitting in my heart and dictating and I am simply taking notes, Rupa Goswami writes. So in that Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, while counting 64 transcendental qualities of Krishna, Rupa Goswami Pad says, the top four qualities include Krishna's unparalleled beauty. A sama urdva rupa shri visma pita characharam. Rupa Goswami Pad says, what to speak of someone having beauty more than Krishna? Nobody can even equal Krishna in his beauty. And this beauty is so mesmerizing, Rupa Goswami Pad writes, visma pita characharam. Those who move, they get stunned. And those who are stunned, they start to move by looking at Krishna. What a beautiful definition. He defines Krishna's beauty as a sama urdva rupa shri visma pita characharam. Hindi medi ek vakki me kaha jaye. I'll translate it in English. Ek vakki medi kaha jaye. A sama urdva rupa shri. Jinki rupa madhuri aisi aparampar hai. A sama urdva atulya hai. Jo sthambit avastha me hai. Usko piglaye. और जो पिगल के बह रहा है उसको स्तंभित कर दे। अभी इसको कैसे अंग्रेजी में भाषांतर करूं मैं? इसका कोई भाषांतर नहीं है, क्योंकि रस का क्षेत्र है ये। भक्ति रसामृत सिंधु। रूपकुश्वामी पाठ से इस द ब्यूटी ऑफ़ कृष्णा इस सच दैट यमुना हु इस एवर फ्लोइंग, जस्ट लुकिंग एट कृष्णा क and the rocks of Govardhan, who are always stunned by seeing the reflection of Krishna on their rocks, they start to melt like the river currents of the Yamuna. How, beauty is our, how beautiful is our Kunja Bihari? He doesn't have to fight any war. He fights only one war. That's the battle of Cupid, Kamadev, <laughs> where his beauty wins. Cupid came to Brindavan with his flower arrows. You see in this world when someone falls in love, the symbol that is shown is an arrow going through the heart. That arrow is one of the five arrows of Cupid or Kamadev. So he came, Kamadev or Cupid came to shoot an arrow at Krishna. But just looking at Krishna, just focusing on the target that he wants to shoot, he fell unconscious and his flag fell to the dust of Vrindavan. Krishna stepped on that flag to show the victory over Cupid. You can see this is why the sign of Cupid is a fish. Cupid is called Meen Ketan. In Sanskrit, the word Meen Ketan means Cupid. Meen means fish and Ketana means flag. So Cupid has a flag where he has the sign of the fish. So once he surrendered to Krishna and Krishna stepped on his flag, you can see on the sole of Krishna's feet there is a fish to show complete victory over Kamadev, Cupid. He who is so beautiful that without fighting a war, the opponent put his flag down on the dust of Vrindavan. I don't know whether Cupid surrendered to Krishna for his beauty or whether Cupid surrendered to Vrindavan for its dust. <laughs> Anyway, this is the beauty of Shamasundar. Krishna is so beautiful. A parikalita purvam kascha matkarakari. In one place, my Rupa Goswami writes, O Shamasundar, you are so beautiful that by you looking at yourself in a jewel bedecked pillar, the reflection attracted you to such an extent that you thought, who is this person who is so beautiful? Rupa Goswami Pad writes that when Krishna looked at his own reflection, he thought, this person is so fortunate to be this beautiful without realizing in humility that it is his own reflection. And when he realized, he became very shy and embarrassed. But still he felt 
this pillar which is reflecting the beauty of my personality. I can see it through my eye, but I can't relish it the way Radharani relishes. The seed of Gaura Avatar manifested. <laughs> this beauty of Krishna is such that it attracts even Krishna's heart. Krishnera Madhurya Krishna Upajaye Lobh Samyak Aswadite Nare Mane Rahe Kshobh Chaitanya Charitamrit says Greed increased in the pot of Krishna's heart. How can I taste Shama Sundar's beauty? And because he could not taste it completely and relish it completely being himself, that lobe, that greed led to kshobh, disappointment. I wish I could taste the sweetness of Krishna like how Radharani does. And then Kunja Bihari had to come as Nadia Bihari, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to taste that same mood. How beautiful is Krishna? Lakshmi Devi had to leave Vaikuntha and come and do bhajan at Belvan. Everywhere we can see Lakshmi is giving gold coins through her palms. Therefore, whether someone does Narayan puja or no, they all do Lakshmi puja. Because everyone likes Lakshmi. <laughs> Especially when she gives not rupees or dollars, but gold coins. That's the best, right? So Lakshmi is in this mudra everywhere. She is blessing Dhyana Lakshmi, uh, Mahalakshmi. But that same Lakshmi in Belvan, she is performing tapasya with folded palms. Only, of, only Khichdi is offered in Mahalakshmi temple in Belvan because she's, doing, she's performing tapasya. So Lakshmi on this side of the Jamuna is praying in Vrindavan, only accepting Khichdi as austerity to enter the rasa arena to have darshan of that Shamasundar. Sripad Ayendra Prabhu writes something phenomenal in this regard. Real magic. Sripad Ayendra Prabhu writes that when Radha and Krishna meet, Ayendra Prabhu writes, their complexions mix together. And Krishna's bluish black complexion mixes with Radharani's golden complexion. And the waters of Radhakund look like green emerald reflections by the mixing of blue and yellow. But then what happens? Krishna thinks by looking at the waters of Radhakund, how beautiful are the green water of Radhakund. Once I remember I was in Radhakund and one devotee was telling me the water should be blue. Everywhere in all countries you see the water body is blue. Radha Kund is full of moss and algae and it's green. And I had to tell him that Ayendra Prabhu says actually Radha Kund is green. Because it is the mixing of Radha and Krishna's complexions. Krishna is bluish black and Radharani is golden and mixed together is green. But Sripad Ayendra Prabhu writes something phenomenal in this regard. He says that the mango starts off being green. Every mango starts being green, but reaches its complete juicy, ripe nature when it turns golden. And then he says, Srimad Bhagavatam or Krishna is Galitam Phalam, he is that mango, which means he must have a green side and he must have a golden side. And the green side is Radha and Krishna in Braj, and the golden side is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Kali Yuga. How beautiful is this? Nectar to the ear. So Rukmini Devi is telling Krishna, Rupam drisham drishimatam akhilarthalabham. Hey Krishna, the perfection of the ear is to hear of your qualities and the perfection of the eye is to see you. And one leads to the other. When you hear about him, the desire to see increases and when you see him, you want to know more about him. Rukmini Devi says, unfortunately for me, I am hearing, 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 and my desire to see you is increasing, but alas, I can't see you. My Lord, please make this possible. Come and kidnap me from the hands of Shishupa. There is a whole Nanda Nanda Nashtakam glorifying Krishna's Rupa Madhuri. How beautiful. Sucharu Vaktra Mandalam. Krishna's face is so beautiful. Sucharu Vaktra Mandalam, Sukarana Ratna Kundalam. And Krishna's earrings are so beautiful. 
In fact, in the ninth canto, 24th chapter, Shukdev Goswami has said a verse about Krishna's bodily beauty. And it's astonishing how he places the adjectives. Yasyananam makara kundala charukarana brajat kapola subhagam sa vilasa hasam. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu repeats the same verse while speaking to Sanatan Goswami. And he says, Hey Sanatan, Makara Kundala, Krishna is wearing shark shaped earrings. But that's not as beautiful as Charu Karna, as the beautiful ears. In this world, ears look beautiful when the beautiful earrings adorn the ear hole or the ear lobe. But Mahaprabhu says, Yasyananam Makara Kundala. But charu karna. Charu is the only adjective used. And that is not for the earring, but for the ears. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying, in this world, earrings are used to decorate the ear. But hey, Sanatan, for Krishna, the earrings look beautiful when they sit on the throne of the beautiful ears. Everything about Krishna is so beautiful. So charu vaktra mandalam. So karna ratna kundalam. Beautiful shaped earrings and ears. So Charchitanga Chandanam, his body is decorated with sandalwood pulp. Mother Yashoda has different colors of sandalwood pulp. Sometimes she mixes green tulsi leaves in that and makes it Hari Chandanam. Kasturi Tilakam, Lalata Patale, Vakshasthale Kaustubam, Nasagre Varamauktikam, Karatale Venu Karai Kankanam Sarvangi Harichandanam Sulalitam Kante Chamuktavali Gopastri Pariveshito Vijayate Gopala Chudamani. Sri Pad Balabhacharaji used to chant this verse from the Gopal Tapani Upanishad and cry loudly, calling out to Krishna. My Guru Maharaj at Govardhan told me. Glorifying Sripad Ballabhacharya. He said, of all the Acharyas who lived at Govardhan, Sripad Ballabhacharya ji was the most advanced. He said, when I came to Vrindavan for the first time, everywhere in and around Govardhan, it said Mahaprabhu ki baithak, which means the sitting place of Mahaprabhu. And my Guru Maharaj said, I thought it was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And I was thinking, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has sat everywhere in and around Govardhan. Then Guru Maharaj said, then when I asked the Brajbasis, they said, this is Sripad Ballabhacharya Mahaprabhu. And my Guru Maharaj said, he just didn't sit. He sat with the Srimad Bhagavatam and gave seven days of class from there. That is a baitak. He said, Sripad Ballabhacharya ji is in and around Govardhan. And the way he relished the beauty of Krishna. Ah, Adharam Madhuram. Krishna, your lips are sweet. Vadanam Madhuram, Krishna, your face is sweet. Nayanam Madhuram, Krishna, your eyes are sweet. Hasitam Madhuram, Krishna, your smiling is sweet. Krishna is saying only the externals are sweet, huh? No, no, Krishna, Ridayam Madhuram, you are a sweetheart. So externally and internally sweet. So he felt very shy, Sri Krishna. And he turned his back and started walking away. Sri Padvala Bhachari said, hey, Krishna, wait. Krishna turned back. Even your walking away is sweet. Gamanam madhuram. Madhuradhi pater. Akhilam madhuram. Krishna, everything about you is so sweet. Sripad Bilva Mangala Thakur, who was netrahin, who externally did not have eyes, he has glorified Krishna's bodily beauty. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami quotes that in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Madhuram madhuram vapurasya vibho. O Krishna. Madhuram madhuram. Madhuram means sweetness. So what we eat on the plate is one sweet. But madhuram madhuram vapurasya vibho. Krishna, your body, too sweet. But on that body, madhuram madhuram vadanam madhuram. Your face is three sweet, three times sweeter. But on that face, Madhu Gandhi Mrudhu Smitam Etadaho. Oh Krishna, when you open your mouth and honey-like fragrance of your aroma comes 
and the smiling and the rows of white kunda flower like jasmine flower like buds or the effulgence of white pearls who are arranged in a very beautiful row and array and at the same time krishna the redness of your lips and sometimes you hold your red lips with your white teeth what do i say about this the sweet of this world one sweet but your form too sweet your face three sweet but what about that smile on that face madhu gandhi mrudhu smitam etad aho aho means there's no filler that i can add my lord oh god that kind of expression madhu gandhi mrudhu smitam etad aho madhuram 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 this is netraheen bilva mangala thakur writing dear devotees now i want to take you on a ride please fasten your seat belts this is the best description of krishna's bodily beauty that i have ever read in my life are you ready let us start first we'll start off well we'll we will say who has composed this at the end is that okay so that'll remain as the running suspense okay let's start hmm? i was almost going to say the name of the author who has written it but whoever the acharya is he writes the ankles of krishna they are like two fruits which feed the parrot like eyes of the brajbasis we'll repeat that krishna's two ankles are like two plump fruits which have been kept there by brahma to feed the parrot like eyes of the brajbasis and then how beautiful are they the acharya writes if you ever see yamuna flowing during krishna paksha on a night sky night time glistening reflecting waves of the jamuna with the blossoming blooming blue lotuses the acharya writes this beauty is eclipsed by the dark complexion ankles and krishna's legs this is how beautiful krishna's ankles are we never get to hear about krishna's ankles right that's quite an interesting one the pujaris of kunj bihari may know <laughs> then going ahead krishna's shin has been described the acharya says the two shins of krishna the front part of the feet they are so lovely that they like to fall in love with each other <laughs> they are mutually so attractive that they love to love each other and therefore when they embrace each other the world calls it the threefold bending form when krishna crosses one leg over the other it's actually the two shins who are meeting <laughs> the acharya writes hmm then what about the two knees we are systematically going up from the ankle to the shin to the knees it is said these two knees of krishna they are the two royal thrones where a king called grace and handsomeness sit <laughs> the knees of krishna are the two royal thrones where grace and handsomeness sit and it's the treasure chest where an ornament has been kept if you generally have a closet or a treasure chest you may have something valuable inside so the knees of krishna are the treasure chest where an invaluable ornament called unparalleled sweetness has been placed so the knees are the most beautiful now going ahead the thighs have been described the thighs of krishna are plump long broad smooth and tapering <laughs> only he who has seen it can describe these are not uh, imaginative descriptions how fascinating the thighs of krishna are plump long 
broad, smooth, and tapering. They taper. And at the same time, it is described, it is a battlefield where Kamadev dies. The thighs of Krishna are the battlefield where Kamadev or the Lord of Love, Cupid, dies because he has never seen something this beautiful. Or it can be said, the thighs of Krishna are two blue cushions made by Brahma for pure devotees like Prahlad to sit on. <laughs> <laughs> I repeat that. These are things, they need repetition. Huh? Krishna's thighs are two blue cushions made by Brahma for devotees like Prahlad to sit on. Because we know in Nishinga Avatar, Prahlad sat on the lap. And then if Prahlad, then what to speak of Dhruva and then what to speak of Krishna's friends and such beautiful descriptions. Then it is described, Krishna's thighs can also be compared to two strong poles. Two strong poles where something is tied. And what are they? The hearts of the Vrajvasis. Because whenever demons come, many times Krishna, to show his strength, he pulls up his dhoti like a wrestler does. And to just build in confidence in the heart of his friends, he will slam his thighs. So those thighs are like two poles where the hearts of the Brajbasis, especially the Gopas, are tied together. Then going ahead, Krishna's navel has been described. It is described, <laughs> now this is very interesting. It is described Krishna's navel. Should we continue? Very beautiful, poetic descriptions now. It's described Krishna's navel is a water pond which quenches the surubi cow. Well, I'll reframe that. Wait a minute. Krishna's navel is like a nectar water pond which quenches the thirst of the surubi cow like eyes of the Brajbasis. Which means the eyes of the Brajbasis have been compared to Surbi cows. And Krishna's navel has been compared to a water pond. Just like the cows love to drink water from a water pond, the eyes of the Brajbasis love to drink the beauty of Krishna's navel. This is why you can see Namo Pankaja Nabhaya. Ahushchate Nalina Nabha Padaravindam. Krishna is called Nalina Nabha, Padma Nabha, Kamala Nabha, which has many interpretations. One meaning is Krishna's navel is in the shape of a lotus. Or Krishna is the one from whose navel lotus sprung, on which Brahma appeared. Right? The gopi is actually at Kurukshetra called Krishna Nalina Nabha. Ahushchate Nalina Nabha. And that's an indirect taunt to say, those were the days in Vrindavan when you didn't wear anything on the top and we could see the shape of your navel. But now look at you as the king of Dwarka. You have armor all over your chest and we can't, what to speak of us, nobody can see your navel. So just by saying, all oh, lotus naveled one, there's a taunt there. How do we know your lotus navel? We don't know. Because nowadays you're carrying this armor of a king. Those were the days when we knew. <laughs> so Srimad Bhagavatam runs on parallel lines like this. For those who um, are reading it for the first time, they will see it as a glorification. Oh Krishna who has lotus navel, he who is lotus navelled one. But then the question could come, why, do you, why not call him the lotus petal eyed one? Why not he who has a lotus feet? But the gopis remember Krishna in Vrindavan just walking with flower garlands. So his lotus navel was very prominent. But now at Kurukshetra he is Dwarkadish and he has armor and sword and what not. So by saying Nalina Nabha, the gopis are invoking the days in Vrindavan. <laughs> Another example given, 
that Krishna's navel is like a honey pond and the eyes of the Brajbazis are bumblebees. Just like a honeybee loves to find honey, what to speak of a honey pond? Can you imagine what a honey bee would do when it finds a honey pond? It'll drown in it. So it's described, Krishna, your navel is a honey pond which drowns the bee-like hearts and eyes of the residents of Vrindavan. Or, your navel is an ocean where the eyes of the Brajbasis are like fish. The eyes look at your navel like the fish swims in the ocean. So how many examples did we give for the navel? Who remembers? The first one was nectar pond for the surubi cows. Second, honey pond for the honeybees. And third, ocean for the fishes. Now the fourth and the final. Oh Krishna, your navel is like a den while the eyes of the gopis and the gopas is like a lion. Just like the lion, after finishing all its running around in the forest, loves to enter its own den. Similarly, the Brajbasis, after doing all their daily chores, the lion of their eyes love to return to the den of your navel. <laughs> so next time we have Darshan of Kunj Bihari, these are the things to meditate upon. So how can we finish having Darshan in two seconds? Not possible. When we say, did you take darshan? It is seva through the eyes. It's not a physical gymnastic activity, curtains open, I offer my obeisances and I leave. We are supposed to stand there and remember all the beautiful things we have read and heard about the beauty of the Lord. And superimpose with that knowledge, the vision that we are having, the beautiful glance on the deity. And at the same time, we should become recipients of the Lord's glance on us. Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj used to call it as the eye-to-eye -eye union. Darshan means eye-to-eye -eye union. Far ahead of his time. 30 years ago, Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj said, this is called Netrotsava. Having darshan of Krishna, Shringar darshan is Netrotsava. It's the festival of the eyes. That's the only time the eyes are performing seva. He said the eyes meet the eyes. And all that we have read and heard and prayed, they all come handy. And we pray to Krishna, my Lord, I hope you're looking at me the way I'm looking at you. And Krishna is saying, I hope you can ever look at me the way I look at you. <laughs> because God always loves us much more than we can. And then it is described. Krishna has a thin hairline connecting his navel to his chest. Hmm? The Acharya described Krishna has a thin hairline connecting his chest to his navel. So what is that description? He said that Krishna's chest is as strong as Sumeru mountain. And from that Sumeru mountain like chest falls a waterfall, nectar waterfall in the form of line of hair, straight into the ocean of ambrosial beauty that is the navel. So typically imagine there's a mountain and there's waves from the ocean touching the feet of the mountain, right? That's a typical beach scene. So this mountain is the chest of Krishna and there are waterfalls from there mixing with the ocean. The ocean is the navel, the mountain is the chest and the thin hairline is the nectar waterfall from the mountain into the ocean. And then finally, please everyone repeat. Muktavali Surathuni Tanuroma Raji Bhaswat Sutataralaka Tisaraswati Nam Sangena Mangalakaram Trijagajananam 
ಕೃಷ್ಣಸ್ಯ ನೌಮಿ ತಮುರ ಸ್ಥಲ ತೀರ್ಥರಾಜ ನಾವು ದಿ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬಿಂಗ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣಸ್ ಚೆಸ್ಟ್ ರಿಗಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣಸ್ ಚೆಸ್ಟ್ ದ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ರೈಟ್ಸ್ ಮುಕ್ತಾವಲಿ ಸುರಧುನಿ ತನುರೋಮ ರಾಜಿ ಭಾಸ್ವತ್ ಸುತ ತರಲ ಕಾಂತಿ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ನ ದಿ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಸೇಸ್ ಓ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಟು ಪ್ರಯಾಗ್ because the three rivers of prayag ganga yamuna and saraswati are found on your chest your chest is the tirtharaj prayag so krishna is asking how can you describe so the acharya says muktavali suradhuni suradhuni means ganga the pearl necklace that adorns your chest o krishna that's effulgent and white that reminds me of the waves of the white complexioned ganga ganga flows white jamuna flows black and saraswati is invisible but is said to have a reddish tinge so the acharya says muktavali suradhuni tanurom raji bhaswat suta taral kanti saraswati nam sangen mangal karam trijagat jananam krishnasya nomitam tam urasthala tirtharaj I bow down to the prayag of your chest my lord where the three colored three rivers mix the white effulgent pearl necklace reminds me of the white waves of the ganga but at the same time my lord your dark complexion chest reminds me of the ever flowing chamun and in that my lord in that chest the red reddish love that you have for your devotees in your chest that cannot be seen but can be felt that saraswati is hidden but it is reddish because red means love that's in your chest inside so the dark complexion yamuna with the white complexioned ganga and the red complexioned invisible saraswati in the heart the love that you have for your devotees this is one interpretation another interpretation the white colored pearl necklace the black colored hairline and the the touching of both there's a red ruby pearl or stone in the center that's the central just like every flower garland has a central flower so the necklace has a central stone so the white pearls are the ganga the black hairline is the jamuna and the red stone in the center is saraswati and this meeting the acharya says my dear lord is the prayag to finally finish the discussion here description here the acharya speaks of the face after the chest and describes everyone ready for the face now if the body is so beautifully described what to speak of the face the acharya says call for a full moon it's almost an instruction bring a full moon take all the spots away now decorate it with two dancing kanjana birds so the full moon is the face the two dancing kanjana birds which move end to end are the eyes then put two bows of kamadev on top of them which are curved and ready to fight the battle those are the eyebrows of krishna then it's described between the two kanjana birds keep a side profile of a sesame flower and that's the nose <laughs> the sesame flower has a very high raised tip so from the side it seems like krishna's nose then to the sides of the sesame flower keep two mirrors and those are the cheeks and then it is described under the sesame flower keep series of kunda white buds those are the teeth 
and above and below them keep two banduka flowers which are reddish and glossy and those are the lips and finally in this beautiful moon lit forest garden the acharya writes bring in lot of nectar seeking bumblebees in the form of curls of soft black curly hair dear devotees what do you think of this description and this is the english this is my perverted reflection paraphrase of the english what to speak of the english and then what to speak of the original sanskrit description dear devotees let's offer our gratitude and obeisances to the acharya who composed this describing krishna's bodily beauty the one and only shila krishna das kaviraj goswami pad ki after this description was composed shila jeeva goswami heard this with closed eyes with tears dripping from his eyes wetting his cheek he opened his eyes and said krishna das i give you the title kaviraj after this description krishna das became krishna das kaviraj rukmini devi has only heard this description like you and i she hears this description and this is why first verse and second verse she explodes with the same word rupam my lord i have heard of you you may not have even heard of me but by hearing of you now my desire is to see this form i know i can see you because i'm getting married tomorrow to shishupal but my lord i know you can come and kidnap me you can come and take me by force rukmini devi is so mesmerized by krishna's qualities that she describes krishna's bodily beauty and then goes on to describe other qualities katwa mukunda mahati kula she says krishna your family dynasty is also so wonderful who is your mother dara vara karavar suta te tanu jo virinchi stota vedas tava suragana bhritya varga prasad muktir maya jagad avikalam tavaki devaki te mata mitram bal ripu sutas tatvat anyam na jane o krishna your mother is devaki and how kind and compassionate she is she saw the murder of six children in front of her eyes and still had the heart to forgive kamsa can you imagine how great a woman would be how strong is a mother and if krishna is born from her rukmini is saying your mother saw the death of six and she forgave the tormentor o oh krishna i have heard sons carry the heart of the mother if your mother can be so compassionate you don't have to be compassionate on kamsa you just be compassionate on me if you wait any longer i don't know about six children dying but one will definitely die if your mother is so kind o oh krishna how kind should you be please don't ignore my letter please come and rescue me so katwa mukunda mahati kula she points out to krishna's birth lineage shila what does shila mean character sarvesham api sarva karana idam shilam param bhushana what is the use if someone is this beautiful but the character is not good everything is spoiled everything is lost but if this beauty is coupled with unparalleled character or oh, that person is advitiya one without a second so dear devotees rukmini devi calls krishna as someone with impeccable character can you imagine dantavakra 
is chasing Krishna. Dantavakra is chasing Krishna and Krishna runs into a cave. Dantavakra trying to find Krishna enters the cave and in that cave Krishna starts to hide. Dantavakra can't find Krishna but in that cave Dantavakra finds a sleeping man. There's a king called Muchukunda Maharaj who fought the demons from the demigod side and he won the battle. So the demigod said, you ask for a benediction, Muchukunda, we will benedict. Muchukunda said, I have tried so hard fighting this war, I am tired, just give me the benediction, I could sleep. They said, that's easy, what's the benediction about? Muchukunda said, no, no, I should sleep and if anyone wakes me up, give me the power that I can burn them to ashes just by my glance. Well, the demigod said, Okay. Now Krishna wanted to wake Muchukunda up. But he knew of this benediction. So if Krishna wakes Muchukunda, Muchukunda will have blazing eyes towards Krishna. But at the same time, Krishna wants to kill Dantavakra. So instead of Krishna killing Dantavakra, he dragged Dantavakra into that cave where Muchukunda was sleeping. <laughs> and Krishna hid. So now, Dantavakra thought the person who's sleeping was actually Krishna. Disrespectfully, he approached Muchukunda, thinking that it was Krishna who, as a coward, was trying to hide. And surely enough, Muchukunda woke up. And when he woke up from the blazing fire flame of his eyes, he burned to ashes Dantavakra's existence. Now, this is so powerful. After the fire, forest fire of Muchukunda's glance subsided, then Krishna came out of the hiding. <laughs> so both fruits have been hit with the same stone. Muchukunda has been woken up and Dantavakra is killed. So when Muchukunda woke up and Krishna came in front of him, Muchukunda is a pure devotee. But he looked at Krishna and he said, Who are you? Are you the sun god? Are you the moon god? You're so effulgent and beautiful that my eyes were actually blazing hot. They have become as cool as the moonbeams in comparison to your effulgence. Who are you? You certainly must be the moon god or maybe the sun god or maybe you're a fire god. Are you Indra by any chance? Krishna could have gone on a rampage at that point. Didn't you read Bhagavad Gita? Nityo Nityanam Chetanas Chetananam Rasoham Apsukauntaya Prabhasmin Shashi Surya You I am the taste of water I am the light of the sun and moon Krishna didn't say any of this Krishna folded his palms looked at Muchukunda and said I am Vasudev the son of Vasudev This is Sheila This is character where you get a chance to boast but you still keep your foot on the ground. Sometimes we find opportunities to boast and put ourselves above others. That is not character. Character means even when it's so tempting that we can actually put ourselves ahead and we are happy. I'll give you a little example. It's a material example, but it shows, it inspires us. In India, many years ago, chess wasn't a big thing. Now, of course, many young chess players have come up, so Indian chess has risen to the international standard. Many years ago, there was only one chess name, Indian chess player that everyone knew. And who was that? Correct, Vishwanathan Anand. So one time in Chennai, there was a train and there were two passengers speaking to one another. So there was an elderly gentleman and a young boy. So the elderly gentleman asked the young boy, what do you do for a living? Uh, what are you doing? So the young boy said, uh, my passion is to play chess. So the older gentleman said, okay, that's your passion, but what do you do for a living? So the young boy said, I play chess. Yeah, okay, that's okay for the weekend, but what do you do for a living? Right? So the boy said, I professionally play chess. So the older man said, you know, I, 
it's none of my business, but you know, honestly, I, I just want to give you a little bit of advice. Don't give up your career. But I just want to give you a little advice. Take up a full-time IT job. Right? You don't have to give up chess. Keep this on the weekend and, you know, it's not the main thing. So the young boy said, but, uh, you know, but uh, I, I want to make it as my full-time profession. So the gentleman said, come on, only Vishwanath and Anand can make money out of chess. Not everyone else. And the joke is, the younger gentleman was Vishwanath and Anand. <laughs> this older gentleman was speaking to Vishwanath and Anand about how he should give up chess and take a full-time job. Only Vishwanath, he knew the name Vishwanath and Anand, but had never seen Vishwanath and Anand. So he didn't know the person whom he was speaking to was actually the person who he was talking about. And Vishwanath and Anand just played along, never telling the gentleman that he was actually Vishwanath and Anand. He got off the train, letting the senior citizen still believe that he gave good advice and never letting him know that actually I am Vishwanath and Anand, you know. So I remembered, when I read that little article, I remembered, it was very similar to Muchukunda Maharaj asking Krishna, who are you? And Krishna could have gone on saying, I am the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Ishwara Parama Krishna Sachitananda Vigrana Adira Adira Govinda Sarvakaran Govinda Madhi Purusham Tamaham Bajami Pantastu Koti Shatavatsara Sampragamyo Advaita Machyuta Manadi. He could have gone on with the Abhishek, you know, the whole Brahma Samhita. But he said, I am Vasudev, the son of Vasudev. Rukmini Devi is saying, where else will I find a person like this who has excellent family lineage, excellent character, and excellent exquisite beauty? Rukmini's letter continues for five days. Few more qualities to come. That will be covered tomorrow. Goro Premanande, Shishi Radha Kunjavihari Ki, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Nitai go for Premanandi.